Okay. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, I am Osamu Tsukihashi from Kobe University. Uh, now uh, it's Japan time is uh, uh, almost tw uh, 22 o'clock. So uh, I'm very glad to join this uh, conference as a keynote. Uh, so uh, yesterday I, uh, I made a, a video lecture uh, for uh, 20 minutes. So please enjoy <laughs> the, my uh, lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. We will re release you now and I will show to the audience your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Osamu Tsukihashi, my students in some way. Just after tsunami, we had discuss with my students and other young architects, and we started to discuss what we could do. What we talk about is that nobody is specialist for this kind of catastrophe. The disaster was so huge. We all agreed that we wanted to support the affected areas and communities but we only knew about the affected sites through TV shows and YouTube. I have to apple the chance, and but didn't the video didn't start from them. the beginning. Hi, I'm Osamu Tsukihashi from Kobe University. Thank you for inviting me to the keynote of very meaningful conference. From now on, I will give a lecture entitled Lost Homes and the Memories of Hometown. First of all, I would like to express our deep condolences to the victims in the 2020 Beirut explosion and sincere wishes to their families and the injured. And I, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Thomas Shinko for organizing my participation in this conference. Before starting my lecture, let me introduce you to the relationship between me and Beirut. I have stayed in Beirut for a week in summer of 1997. At that time, I was a graduate student at the University of Tokyo and was conducting a survey of traditional villages around the world. After a research trip to traditional villages in Yemen, I visited my laboratory senior, Nadim Karam, an architect in Beirut. Today, as an international artist, he realizes public art projects around the world. At that time, I remember staying in his studio and visiting the Roman ruins of Lebanon. Okay, I introduce myself shortly. I am an architect and I have been running my office, Architects Tea House, for 20 years and at the same time, I have been teaching as a professor at the several university. From 2003 to 2009, I worked as a lecturer at the Tohoku Institute of Technology in Sendai and also started my office. In 2010, I moved to Kobe University as an associate professor. And so I also moved my office to Kobe. Kobe is also a city that was severely damaged by the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake in 1995. In March 11 of 2011, one and a half years after I had moved to Kobe, is when the big earthquake and tsunami hit Tohoku. I have a lot of friends and colleagues in Sendai and Tohoku area. 
Let's start on Lost Homes Project. It's a reconstruction assistance in response to the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami, aiming to commemorate lost towns and villages with one to five scale model. On the afternoon of March 11 of 2011, the big earthquake and tsunami hit the coastal area of Tohoku. Earthquakes are so common in Japan, the communities are well trained and people know that you must get higher ground because of the possibly possibility of the tsunami after earthquake. But nobody imagined how big this would be. A huge tsunami with a wave height of 10 meter or more and maximum height of 40 meters occur. Catastrophic damage occurred in the Pacific coast of Tohoku and Kanto regions. 18,429 deaths of missing persons. A total of more than 400,000 houses destroyed more than 400,000 evacuees in 2011. Tsunami flooded area was 561 kilometer, square kilometers, equals to 2,244 models. That means each of our diorama models is, in, is one meter square in scale of one to 500. This is a photo of the Sishiori district in Kesenuma city, Miyagi prefecture, before the earthquake. You can see houses and shops along the streets. This is a picture of city after tsunami. The tsunami destroyed most of the buildings and many large ships were launched ashore. This photo shows the rubble being removed several months after the earthquake. But on the day of the earthquake, a fire broke out in the town and the fire did not go out for several days. When the earthquake occurred at 2.46 p.m., I was driving to the university in Kobe. I got the news by radio. So I stopped my car and I made phone call to my friend in Kesenuma to make sure he was okay. But just after that, my phone call would not go through. And in fact, Three days passed before telephone reconnected. In the meantime, we began to think about what we could do as architects to deal with this catastrophic disaster. As an architect, I wanted to go to the affected area to help, but at the same time as a teacher, I wanted to include my students in some way. Just after tsunami, we had discussed with my students and other young architects, and we started to discuss what we could do. What we talk about is that nobody is specialist for this kind of catastrophe. The disaster was so huge we all agreed that we wanted to support the affected areas and communities, but we only knew about the affected sites through TV shows and YouTube. And we didn't know much about them before they had been affected by the disaster. We wanted to know what had existed before and what had been lost. But more spe specifically, what images 
that people in the affected communities had had of their happy town before disaster. We wanted to connect with the people's shared image of their community. In this very simple way, we came up with the idea that architecture students could make models of the community's buildings to help them connect to this shared image. We started to make diorama of the town before tsunami in scale of one to 500. One meter square model shows 500 meter square area of the town. It corresponds to the, to the neighborhood precinct. We call one meter square model as one pixel. Tsunami flooded area equal to 2,244 pixels. Excluding 38% of the affected farmland, 1,391 pixels are, are the area where people live. Can we imagine their life in pixel by pixel? This, this was our problematic when we start the project. We started Lost Home Project from 24th March, two weeks after earthquake. In 4th of May, two months later, I visited city of Kesenuma to bring supplies for my friend. I had chance to make interview with director of counter disaster office of city government. I made the first proposal of our project. I will show you a short video of interview. もう、なるほど、前のですね、状態を木で収録の模型とかですね、家がこうあるっていう形でやるとあの、色々こう皆さんそのなんだろう、これからじゃあ、なくなっちゃったけど、これからどうしてこうかっていう時の足がかりみた
architecture students are very pure and hardworking. Students from 12 universities nationwide have gathered to start a project to make restored model of the disaster stricken city. They carefully made the Orama model in memory of each town. Its, ap its appearance was like a sculptor carving the Buddha statue. In the first year of the project, more than 100 pixels of white models were produced, restoring the disaster areas in Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefecture. The white diorama model was exhibited at museums in Tokyo and Kobe, and it was, it was an opportunity for many people to recall the former scenery of lost towns in Tohoku. We brought the white model to the city office of Kesenuma, and we placed it in the lobby. Suddenly, lots of people started to gather around the model. One woman pointed at the house and said, I lived here. And then they all started to talking about their memories of the town. The city office gave us a dedicated, dedicated room for one week to do a workshop. Over that week, many townspeople came to the room to paint the model with the students and they enjoyed the experience putting small flags describing their memory with some words, which tells names of buildings, memories of taking a walk with their child, cherry blossoms. I think this is important process of painting the models and putting trees along the river is the process of rebuilding their memories of hometown. We call this program as Town of Memories Workshop. I introduce you the Town of Memories Workshop held in Kesenuma in 2012. Students brought a white diorama model made in a university studio to the city hall in Kesenuma for a seven day exhibition. We will interview visitors, interview to visitors about the memory of their town and put the small plastic flag with words in the place of memory. And students help visitors color the roof of their house in the model. Visitors enjoy coloring white, remembering the color of the roof of their house. At the end of the seven day workshop, the white, white model becomes very colorful. When you look into the model, the flag of memory with various memories tells you the library scene of the former townscape. People in Tohoku were generally said to be quiet and do not speak much. However, at this workshop, they couldn't stop talking while looking at the model. This is a card to write down the memories that could not be written on the small flag. We call it tweets. The number of visitors to the seven day workshop exceeded 1,000 and the number of tweets was 484. In addition, over 600 memory flags were plotted on the two pixel diorama models. There are many library comments of tweets, such as memories of the scenery, 
when he was young, when the port town was risen, and memories of old houses that were washed away by the tsunami. During the 10 year lost home project, we made 66 restored models of the disaster area in Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures. The 492 pixels we make are about one third of all 1,391 pixels in the whole disaster area. We have held 58 workshops with a total of more than 800 students, including the exhibition. The total number of visitors exceeds 40,000. More than 50,000 flags of memory and almost 10,000 tweets are a collection of words that make up a valuable oral history that we must pass on to the next generation. I will show you another clip. It's a part of TV program, Memories of Hometown, produced by NHK in 2013 you can see how the workshop is going on. We held a big exhi exhibition by collecting the results of local workshop. This photo is an exhibition held in Morioka, the capital of Iwate Prefecture. Many victims live with their families who live in the city away from their hometowns. Some of them were feeling the emotional stress of having separated from the affected community. Looking at the diorama model that expresses the nostalgic memories of their hometown, we received a lot of feedback that they have got here. This is the photo of, of the exhibition in Sendai for seven towns in Miyagi Prefecture. At the exhibition hall, we receive a lot of feedback from visitors. I remember the words from the disaster prevention director of Kesenuma when we start this project. What we have learned through that lost home project is that the town is made of memories. A town is made of made up of physical entities such as architecture, infrastructure, mountains, rivers, and sea. But at the same time, it can be said that it is made of the memories of each and every society living in the town. 
Since 2018, reconstruction work has progressed in the disaster area and the new town has begun to be completed. Some of the models were some of the models we have created have been donated and exhibit, exhibited at the town's new community centers and memorial facilities. This is the case of Otsuchi town of Iwate prefecture, which I show you in the video clip. Nine pixel models are exhibited in the hall of cultural exchange center. The facility also has a town library. So students, parents and children came every day and looking at the model in the hall. It is effective for community education and for children to develop attachment to the community. From 2019, we have started the new challenge of the conducting lost home projects in cultural area other than Japan. We try to make a collaboration with Gajamada University in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Using an English manual and Skype meeting, students made a collaboration international. We made a restored model for Bakalan village, which was affected to affected by 2010 eruptions, 2010 eruptions of Mount Merapi. The entire village was burned down by the phytoclastic flow and people have moved to the new village nearby. During the local workshop, Kobe students joined Indonesian students. Workshop held in the local language. Japanese students backed up the model making and the Indonesian students work for interview with community. In the workshop, local people got excited more than Japanese community. They never stop talking with their former hometown. We have customized the flags of memories into Indonesian version. Lastly, I introduce you our website of Lost Home Project, where you can get current information. I think that local history People's memory is the seed of a human resource and development, but most important is coexisting with history, having the discussion and gener generating culture. In Japanese communities, the elders are typically the leaders of the community, but today's young people don't have time to connect with the older generations. With the models, the old people put their memories on the model, which allows for younger generation to understand. What is important is communication between generation. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope uh, you to enjoy the conference and uh, making a success uh, of the two days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.